Hello, my name is Sherry Hogerill and I'm with the Muscatine Commission on Aging. We are going to do Seasoned Citizens Presents. With me this afternoon is Marv Smith and he is co-owner of Tri-County Supplies located on Highway 61 south of Muscatine. Tri-County, I understand, sells plumbing, electrical, and hardware supplies? That's right. Is that correct? Today, Marv and I are going to discuss some ways that you can make your home safer. Everybody's concerned about accidents in the home, and in fact, the National Safety Council tells us that over 20,000 Americans died and 3 million people suffered injuries in their homes last year alone. With us today, we have um, a number of items that you can purchase that will will make your home a safer place to be. Some of them are a little more expensive than others. All of them I'd like you to keep in mind would make a nice Christmas gift with the upcoming holidays. We're going to just start in, I guess the room we're going to start in is the bathroom. That's a right. lot of accidents happen in the bathroom. And uh, one of the first things that you suggest we talk about is a handicapped stool in the bathroom. Right. The handicapped stool is the biggest requested item that we have people seem to have a lot of interest in them. Uh, they see them in various places, hospitals, clinics, and then they decide that they might like to have one in their own home. Mm -hmm. A handicapped stool is taller than normal. It's about 18 inches tall. Uh -huh. And this helps people when they try to raise and lower themselves. I see. Um, we didn't have one in the studio today, but we did have a picture of one that we could show people. Are these an expensive item to put in a home? The handicapped stools run about $169 in white. Okay. Colored models may be extra. All right. Um, is that something that the average person could install themselves? Some people could. Uh, others may have to get a qualified plumber contractor to install them in it their home. Depends on if you're a handy Andy or not. Right, uh -huh. right. Is there any, um, if someone's looking to put someone in their bed, put one in their bathroom, is there any certain space requirement that would be different? No, wherever a normal stool would fit, uh, you could use a handicap stool. All right. Okay, the next thing that you have on your list that people might buy, we also don't have one, but we do have a picture, is the handicap seats. Right. For people who have an existing stool and want to adapt it uh, for handicap purposes, they can buy special toilet seats. Mm -hmm. uh, one seat has uh, side rails so that they can help themselves get up and down, and the other model is uh, a seat that's thicker, which raises the overall height of the stool four and five-eighths inches and this okay. is also helpful to them. Okay. Are these an expensive item? They run approximately $120, but they're very well built. They have to handle the weight of, mm -hmm. the, of the human, and uh, so they, there is extra uh, body and strength to them, so they are more expensive. I see. But they're quite reliable, too. Okay. And you say these could be installed by yes, your most, average person? Yes. Most homeowners could, uh, could install a handicap stool seat. Okay. The next item on our list are safety grip bars. Right. This is another item that we get a lot of requests for. Um, a lot of weekenders come in looking for safety grab bars for their tub area and their, around their toilet stools. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the typical homeowner version first. Uh, this one's a 16-inch model. Uh, this is not a towel bar. This is a heavier built bar made for humans to grab uh, as they enter and exit the tub area. They can be mounted vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Mm -hmm. This particular model comes in a 9-inch and 16-inch version, and the 16-inch version runs about $13.50. Okay. Then, for some people who may want a larger and more substantial bar, I brought along a commercial-type uh, grab bar. This is a 42-inch stainless steel grab bar. Uh, it's made by the Bobrick Corporation. They make uh, a lot of products for commercial and uh, institutional use, but these are also available to homeowners here in Muscatine through okay. my store. Uh -huh. um, they recommend that you mount one of these on each side or one on the side and one on the r at the rear of the stool. Okay. And this is very helpful. Uh, this one just has a satin stainless finish. They do have one that has a slightly roughened finish for added grip. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, do you uh, consult with people as far as how many they need to put, if they yes. need to put them in different places around the tub? Yes. We have catalogs that show ideal placement of this type of item, and we can, we can inform them as to how to best 
replace them for their their needs okay um, one other thing is there any certain requirements as far as what sort of wall they're going to put them in how do they attach to the wall yeah the biggest requirement is that you fasten that to a very sound wall you want to make sure that when when you rely on that bar that it is reliable you mm -hmm. want to mount it securely okay so you've in other words have to find the beams and things yes, like that yes it's okay. important very important all right that is important About there's, there's one more okay. uh, grip rail that I might bring up at this time this is a bathtub safety uh, grab bar. It fastens to the tub over the tub apron. Now the tub apron is the front side of the tub where you enter and exit the tub. It has adjustable clamps and it can be adapted to most tubs, including today's uh, fiberglass tubs that are so popular. Uh -huh. So uh, for people who want an added rail, uh, grab rail t uh, for their tub, they might consider this very heavily built uh, tub grab rail. All right. And that particular tub rail uh, runs about twenty eight ninety nine. Okay, one thing that reminded me of when you mentioned the fiberglass tubs, um, oftentimes people are putting the fiberglass tub shower combination the in. The wall kits. Uh huh. Yeah. The wall kits. Will these bars attach to those you bet, wall kits? You bet. A lot okay. of times when they're putting in a tub kit, uh, they're doing some construction. They can find those secure places back behind the walls to uh, fasten their their grab bars to. Okay. So it's it's a good item. All uh, right. The next thing on our list is bathtub and shower faucets. Right. I brought along a single lever tub and shower faucet. I just have the handle assembly here in front of me. And the reason I brought this is because it has one unique safety feature in that the faucet always turns on to the cold first. Now for young uh, children and senior citizens this might be important because nobody wants a shot of hot water down their back. This, this faucet when turned on will always go to the cold first mm -hmm. and then you can set the temperature thereafter. It also has a stop at the end of the at the hot range so that you can set it back so that it will not go clear over to the scalding side of the of the water. So I thought this was a very nice uh, uh, item to bring in today. Most people uh, wouldn't realize what it was capable of doing but um, for people who are remodeling they might consider something like this. That is it's a good very idea. Helpful would be helpful. Now is that something someone could install by themselves? Some people can. Some people might have to have a plumber come in and, and install that for them. All right. Um, how about the cost of something like that? That particular faucet, depending on whether it's for tub or shower, could range anywhere from $55 to $65. All right. Um, we were talking about something uh, when we were preparing for the show that I thought was rather important, and that was the handheld showers. Um, yes, they're very common today. Uh, they're very useful to senior citizens and children. Um, they can move the shower rather than having to move their, their bodies under the shower. They can stay in one position and shower with them. But the, the drawback to them is they're an attractive uh, thing to grab a hold of in the tub. And I had a maintenance man tell me that where older people were concerned, they were using them to uh, lift themselves up out of the tub. They're merely a piece of hose. And when the thing lets go, down the people go. So. Mm -hmm. While they are helpful in one way, they can be a, a hazard in another. All right. That also is a good reminder to only use things to balance ourselves that are made to right. balance or to pull right. ourselves up with that are made to be used for that. Um, I see you have some tub appliques there. Right. This is a fairly common item. A lot of your newer tubs today have a non-skid bottom in them. But if you have a tub that does not have the non-skid bottom, a bathtub applique set might be helpful for you. Right. Provides good footing in the tub area. These are uh, adhesive. They can be removed or they can be uh, applied and removed easily. And um, just about anyone could could put bathtub appliques in. Okay. This particular set runs 339, and there are 16 of them in there. Uh huh. Which would be enough to do a good sized bathtub. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Would. And those you can install yourself. Right. All right. right. One other thing um, that you have here in the bathroom that people might think about doing is insulating hot pipes. I think this is real interesting. That's I right. I worked in a commercial building one time and we were setting up a lavatory for wheelchair patients. And I learned at that time that uh, you should try to insulate the hot water pipe under the, under the lavatory so that when wheelchair patients wheel up to a, a lavatory that may have been used just recently, their knee may come into contact with that hot water pipe. 
the uh, city inspector recommended that I put just a simple piece of plastic tubing on that pipe just to insulate it enough so that someone wouldn't get uh, burned. Uh -huh. uh, some wheelchair people do not have feeling in their legs. Uh, when they come into contact with this, all they would feel is just the warm plastic and not a hot, scalding pipe. This piece of pipe costs 10 cents. All right. That's, that would be real helpful, too. That was something I didn't think about until we were talking about things for the show. As we go out of the bathroom, um, there's a number of places that we find electricity in the home. Right. I think about every room in the home, in fact. Uh, the first thing on your list that you have when we're checking out our electrical things is called a GFCI. Right, right. That stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. And a lot of people have seen this device, but very few of them understand what it's for. I've seen them in motels. I right. Was. This is where a lot of people see them. A ground fault circuit interrupter is a safety outlet, and it is used in the bath as well as the kitchen and outside areas. This device can keep you from electrocuting yourself. It senses electricity coming in and going away. If you come into contact with a ground fault or a grounded pipe or handle or whatever, in the bathroom or in the tub, whatever, with a curling iron, this safety outlet is going to trip and shut the power off and keep you from becoming electrocuted. Okay, so you told me yesterday how item. fast it would trip. I, I believe it's one one hundredth of a second. Okay, that's really fast. Right, it's enough to keep you from becoming electrocuted. Uh -huh. One other thing about the GFCI outlet is, it, is that it has a test and a reset button. This outlet should be tested at least once every 30 days and then reset. Okay. So, um, By testing, you, you just you push just the button? You just push the button, and it will automatically shut itself off. And then when you reset it, you have power there again. Uh -huh. And this, this device can be installed by the homeowner. If you're not uh, confident about electricity, then maybe you should have a professional look at it for you and install it. Okay. It's a very good idea, a very good gift item, too, for Christmas. All right. Just to give an example of how this works, then, um, say that I'm sitting in the bathtub and I'm listening to the radio, right. and somehow the radio slips off of the counter or whatever and falls into the bathtub. In one one hundredth of a second, this device will turn itself off we'll and save you off. from becoming electrocuted. So there's no current then going through the radio at all? No, no. Okay. It's all dead right. at that point. All right. Um, are these an expensive item? No. I believe this one's twelve ninety nine. Okay. That's, that's a cheap uh, cost for uh, that kind of insurance. It is. Um, that's also something that uh, would be good if you have children around. Absolutely. That would be real good. Absolutely. Uh, the whole family can get yeah. uh, safety from mm -hmm. that. All right. Um, the next thing that you have listed is an outlet plug strip. Right. This is another very common item. People are, are starting to use them. This is a six-plug outlet strip. It has a safety breaker in it, mm -hmm. and it will trip if uh, you, you overload the, the outlet strip. Um, it also tends to keep cords organized. Uh, where, in, where you may have many cords run around on the floor, you can run one, one main cord and plug uh, smaller cords into it. And, uh, this is, this is also another great gift item. It's okay. not very expensive. This one runs eight ninety nine, okay. and um, we're always out of them, so they do sell very well. Uh -huh. This might be good if, um, like, you had your TV and your VCR and a lamp right. and right. Um, a cordless telephone and all those things in your living room. Right. You could, you uh, could behind a Christmas tree, mm -hmm. and also uh, maybe in an office area where you may have computer equipment and you want to keep uh, keep things. Uh, well organized, mm -hmm. but it the safety feature is is in the trip mechanism to guard from the overload. Okay. So okay. it's it's a it's appropriate here today. Obviously, the installation isn't too tough. Very easy. <laughs> All right. Um, smoke detectors. Right. Another very common item in in a lot of homes is the smoke detector. Um, we would advise all people, especially seniors, to have a smoke detector on each floor. Mm -hmm. um, they do uh, emit a very loud alarm, but um, I think it's wise to have one on each floor and maybe one uh, in the furnace area of the home. Mm -hmm. uh, there are various models available, and the prices vary. Uh, in some cases, as with your organization, uh, sometimes they're offered at no charge. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to mention um, the local Eagles organization uh, gave us a grant, and we purchased some smoke alarms. I believe we purchased a total of 200 and any senior citizen who would like to have a free smoke detector can call our office right now 
If they live in the town of Muscatine, the members of the Muscatine Fire Department will come out and install them free. If they live out in the rural parts of the county, we have a handyman who will install them. That's great. So um, all they need to do is call the office if they would like to sign up for one. Uh, one thing that I think is interesting about smoke detectors, since we started our program to, to uh, distribute the, the smoke detectors, we have a lot of people who call and say, mine doesn't work anymore. And what has happened is the battery has just right. gone dead. Right. Um, does that particular one chirp? When it's yes, it does. Okay. This one also has a test button on it, and it uh, it re it requests that you test it weekly. Uh -huh. um, I think that's a good idea. Uh -huh. uh, I think there's a program on right now uh, for people to get up during football commercials and go check the battery in their smoke detector. Oh, I haven't I've seen, seen, that, seen that on yet. TV. Uh -huh. um, one thing that we've been telling people is to give themselves a birthday present every year to always replace the battery on right. their birthday so that they do it at the same time every year. Uh, the safety in those, sometimes people don't realize when they are making like a chirping sound or a, a beep sound occasionally, that means the battery is going low. Yeah. I assume that that's how that one yes, works. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. It signals to you that the battery is, is not reliable. Uh -huh. We had um, some people that put one away. They got it as a gift <laughs> and they put it away. And a year later, it started to chirp and they called the <laughs> refrigerator repair man because they thought the refrigerator had gone bad. Um, cord ends. Um, yeah, uh, some homeowners, seniors as well as others, do a little repair around their house. And I had one item that was of interest to me some time ago when they first came out. This is just the common, ordinary plug, male end. It's the part you plug into the wall. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will remember the old plug uh, ends having a paper washer on them. Well, a lot of times the washer would either become lost or it would become frayed or bent, broken, and the wires would be sticking out of the side. Mm -hmm. Today, they have what they call a dead front cap. It has a safety yellow uh, front, which is held in place with three screws. You cannot get to the wires unless you remove the three screws and pull it apart for, for repair or installation. Uh -huh. But um, so many cords around are, uh, are defective or unsafe because of the cord end. Uh, having a washer missing or the wire sticking out. So I thought I'd bring that along and just show sure. people. It's an inexpensive item. It's only $2.69. And uh, you may not have to throw away an expensive cord just for want of one of these. Okay, now you replace the whole end or you just put the yellow piece on You replace on the, whole, the whole piece. The whole, the whole piece. end is uh -huh. just as you see it here today. Okay. And um, these are very popular and very reliable. All right. And it's grounded. It has a third prong. Okay. That's something that most people would be able to put on themselves. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure they would be. All right. Um, a few final notes about cords right. as they run around the, the house. Uh, you want to be able to keep your cords in, in good condition. Exactly. I see that you have one over here. Right. Um, I just brought along a, a six-foot uh, power cord. Um, this one has a molded plug. It also has a triple cube tap on the end, and um, of course this was in this one's in good condition because it's new. But you mm -hmm. should inspect your cords and make sure that they're that the insulation is not cracked or okay. broken away, and that the wires are exposed. Okay. You should also make sure that there are no uh, burn marks around the prongs that might indicate failure on the inside. Um, just in general, take a good look at these cords before you start using them, okay. especially around the Christmas season with yeah. all the lights and that uh, a lot of these cords come out of a drawer, haven't been used for at least a year, and uh -huh. uh, they, do, they do deteriorate over time. So it's important that you, that you either go out and get a new cord or at least inspect the one that you're using. All this right. one's $1.85. I think last month they were on sale for 99 cents. So okay. there again, it's that's very cheap pretty insurance. Pretty cheap safety, you yeah. Bet. Okay. Um, a couple other things about cords. First of all, people shouldn't keep them in walkways. Right. A lot of times the outlet is over there and the lamp is over here, and so we just drape the cord across the room. That's a good way to have someone fall, especially if they're walking um, in right. the dark. Or and people who don't want to see a, uh, a cord will throw a rug over them, uh -huh. and that's not advised. That yeah. can create a very dangerous situation. All right. Another thing um, that we might remind people of is to make sure that if they have a cord that runs under a piece of furniture, um, making sure that the furniture does not set on the cord. Right. If you have a, the leg of a chair, every time you sit down in that chair, it grinds into the cord. and right. it can and cause can damage. Actually, mm -hmm, you bet. Damage it or break it. Another thing that you want to be careful of when using power cords is that you don't overload them. Mm -hmm. The cord that I had up here has a rating right on it. Uh, the label also has a rating on it. This cord is rated at 13 amps, and uh, 
at 125 volt. Uh, you go 15 amps, you're going to notice this cord starting to get warm, mm -hmm. and warm means breakdown, and warm means fire eventually. So uh, you don't want to overload your cords, and uh, always check the outlet and the cord to feel uh, to feel the outlet to see if uh, if there's some warmth there. It sure. could mean that there's an overload condition happening okay. here. Okay, okay, that's a good reminder. Lighting is another thing that I think is important, no matter which room of the house that you're in. Right. Okay. Hallways can be a problem. A lot of hallways are dark. Uh, people might uh, take a look at their hallways at night and uh, if there are dark areas they may check with an electrician or stop down to the store and purchase an extra light for their hallway. All right. um, a lot of work areas uh, are, are deficient in the amount of light that they have. People who read a lot or sew or just in general work in an area may need more light. Um, they could put a fluorescent light in or, or do some other area lighting. So lighting is important in the home uh, for safety and for comfort. All right. Um, might mention like in the kitchen if you're going to be working with knives or anything, that's right. a good place for right. light. You want to be able to see what you're doing. Yeah. Um, in the living room if they're going to be reading, you want to be able to have right. good light so that right. you have a little touch and glow thing there. Do right. you want to talk about that a little bit? You bet. There are a number of types of lamps on the market today that uh, as you touch them, they come on. If you have a good lamp uh, that you like and it, it blends in well with your decorating and you want it to become a touch and glow lamp, you can add this socket touch and glow device. You merely screw it into the socket on your fixture and, it, uh, and you put your bulb in it, of course. Then when you touch the, the fixture, it will come on. Mm -hmm. These are particularly useful to seniors around the bed area so that when they when they need to get up in a hurry in the evening and they they don't want to reach around for a switch all they have to do is touch the base of the lamp or any metallic part portion of the of the lamp Absolutely. and it will come on mm -hmm. so uh, these uh, these seem to be popular for that reason I think they can be used elsewhere in the home yeah. but uh, for safety reasons uh, in the bedroom area okay. also night lights uh, night lights maybe in the bathroom area and also hallways can be helpful all right, by night lights you mean even just the little... Just the small the little night bulbs. light to, mm -hmm. to light the walkway so right. that they can see where they're going. That's a good idea. Uh, they might want to put the night lights near the telephone area. Exactly. If they have to call for help in the night or something, they can see the, the numbers on the telephone. Yes, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Motion lights is something else that we had to talk about. Right. Motion lights are commonly used on the outside of homes. They are a weatherproof switching device that... Uh, that light walkways, uh, driveways, and when you come into that motion detection area, the switch turns the light on, and uh, will, it will stay on a short while while you move through the area. Uh, they are quite popular, and uh, we do have them available at, okay. at our store. I, I can uh, vouch for those. We have yeah. one. I park in an alley and um, at home, and we have one on the back of the garage. As I walk around the corner of the garage, it even has like peripheral vision or something because the light comes on, uh, it stays on, I believe ours does about 60 seconds. Yes, that's and very handy. It allows you to get up to your home mm -hmm. uh, in a safe manner. If there's something in the yard or something uh, uh, obstructing your path, you'll see it when mm -hmm. the light's on. So yeah. It's sort of nice you drive home at night and as you drive up someone turns the light <laughs> on for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice little thing there. Walkway safety tread strips are something that uh, people can install for relatively no cost. Yeah, this is, this is an item that we get considerable interest in. This is a uh, safety tread strip. This is about a one foot portion. We sell it from a reel so we can cut it off at any length. Uh, this happened to be the widest version that I had. We have one that's about one inch wide and two inch wide, and then I think this one's a three inch wide. Uh, you can feel this. It's very rough. It has a gritty, oh, yeah, a yeah. gritty substance on it, mm -hmm. and it is adhesive on the back. So it merely requires that you peel off the, the uh, adhesive backing and that you place it down. And we find that these are particularly useful in outside steps, uh, wooden porches that have been painted are very, uh, very slick and treacherous. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I put some of these on my mother's front porch and every time I go up there and walk across those, I'm very thankful that they're there for her mm -hmm. and me. So uh, this piece uh, runs 70 to 95 cents per foot, uh, depending on the width. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
anyone can install this uh, this product. Okay. Now this is something that can be put outside. You bet. You okay. bet. So the rain or snow or whatever is not going to cause it to peel up. Uh, over a period of years, you may have to replace it, mm -hmm. but um, uh, the cost is so low that uh, that a person uh, can justify that. I'm okay. sure. All right. That's a good idea. Another thing that I might mention is uh, a lot of times people have hardwood floors or linoleum or something, mm -hmm. especially in hallways, and they tend to put a long rug down there because it's mm -hmm. warmer to sure. walk on, but that's often slick. Um, right. If they would put something like that on the floor under the rug, yes, they could. That they would could. work, or else they can attach something to the back of the rug. Right. There are various so prop, uh, products available that uh, are adhesive, mm -hmm. and they could. Uh, there, there's one product in our store called a spray adhesive. They could also uh, make uh, spot applications of that where that rug is going to be. Uh -huh. uh, there's, there's just a variety of things you can do to these rugs to make them uh, so that they're safer. Okay, that's a good thing. Um, One other place that I think a lot of accidents happen is in stairways. You bet. You bet. There's a lot of stairways in homes. Uh, some of them are uh, carpeted. Some of them just have the old uh, linoleum. Some of them have a rubberized tread strip. Mm -hmm. And um, in my research for today's show, uh, I would like to emphasize to people that they should keep objects off of their stairs, number one. Uh, stairs tend to be a storage place uh, for stuff that has to go upstairs eventually. Um, Objects on the stairs can, can really do one thing, and that's to cause you to fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very important that you keep stuff off of stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, you should check your tread strips for holes or looseness. A loose tread strip uh, can be very treacherous. Uh, you catch a heel on a tre tread strip that's loose, and you're going to go down the stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, you should also check for deteriorated carpet and replace as necessary. A lot of carpeting on stairs gets a tremendous amount of very localized wear and uh, holes will develop and uh, uh, falls are one of the biggest causes of injuries. Okay. Something else about carpet, even if the carpet is not worn out, um, a lot of times what we see is after a while if the stairs get a lot of use, th it gets pulled away right. from the steps. Right. And Pretty soon, it's just like you have a, a, a ramp. little ramp yeah. instead of yeah. steps because it gets pulled away. So that's one thing people might want to be sure that it's nailed back down or you tacked bet. back down. You bet. They even have uh, rods that you can uh, fasten back in the, the corners to keep the uh, to keep the material in place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, stairs are very very commonly dangerous uh, uh -huh. place in the home. A couple other ideas for steps. Um, one thing that people might want to do is be sure that if it's especially if it's not carpeted, they can put like a fluorescent paint line mm -hmm. um, along each step so mm -hmm. that they see, especially if it's in a darker area, dim they can light. see where they're going. Um, dim light is a problem. Maybe sure. they need some better lighting in sure. that area. Yeah, maybe on a landing goes. above the staircase or mm -hmm. something, they might they might add some light. And that, that goes back to what we talked about with hallways. Same applies for stairways. Mm -hmm. There are even light fixtures that are designed just for staircases. They mm -hmm. mount right in the side wall, and they provide light for stair stairways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another place that uh, handrails need to be checked, too, is in stairways. You bet. You bet. There's sure a lot of very weak and um, uh, loose stair railings, and uh, they can be dangerous. We rely on these things, and uh, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that, they're, that they are, in fact, reliable. Sure. And um, a, a person's uh, safety is, is kind of their responsibility. They need mm -hmm. to uh, open their eyes to these things and, uh, and attend to them. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, you're showing us a lot of nice things today. Um, there's another little item there I don't... Oh, yeah, the, the safety plug cap. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people have seen these. They're just a little plastic insert to uh, put in their plugs. Um, senior citizens might be interested in these just for the fact that they have grandchildren come over and visit them. Uh -huh. They're the little plastic cap that plugs in to keep kids from putting needles and pins and screwdrivers and whatever uh, metallic <laughs> device in there. And uh -huh. uh, another side note here is that they're considered to be an energy saver. Okay. Uh, on outside walls, uh, a considerable amount of cold air can come in through the outlets. And when you put oh. one of these in, it stops that. So stops that was an air. interesting little item that, that, is. Uh, that, that is I really brought along today. Well, well, you're showing us a number of things that are, are uh, real good and that would not be real hard to incorporate in your right. home or to put in your home. I think that's uh, 
useful as I said earlier with Christmas coming up and the holidays a lot of times we don't know what to buy right. people um, grandma has enough little glass vases sitting right. around to last right. her for quite a long time but some of these items here would make a real good gift I'm sure um, I know that handrails don't seem real glamorous uh, sometimes to be wrapped up under the Christmas tree but every time she grabs that handrail though she will she will remember that that's that true. was a gift and that uh, is that's true I'd also like to um, mention that the Commission on Aging has a handyman who will come out if anybody does um, purchase or is given a gift like this. Mm -hmm. He will um, install a lot of these things. He does minor home repairs and he will install the handrails. Uh, he can do some of the electrical work, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, his labor is free mm -hmm. for anyone 60 or over. So. I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us today. Hope that we've given you some ideas for your Christmas list or for making your home just a little bit safer. I'd like to thank Marv for joining us today also. It was a pleasure. Okay. Thank you.